Hey, church family, Pastor James here, and I have the honor of leading us today in uh, the Lent devotional. So if you would, grab your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 15 and verse 5. The title is Jesus the Vine. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Wow, you can do nothing. I read this the first time I was blown away. First of all, this is about my favorite portion of the Bible. John chapter 14 through 17 is all red letters for me. And if you know anything about that, it's all Jesus' words. So some people call it the final uh, dissertation or the final discourse. The farewell discourse is what it's called. <laughs> I imagine Jesus in this portion of Scripture uh, gathering his disciples together, um, the 11 of them, the loyal 11, um, and they are the ones that actually remained with him. See, Jesus is just unloading his heart throughout this scripture and, and telling them pretty much everything that he wants them to know before he leaves this earth. It's important for us to note that the disciples knew the books of the Old Testament. They have heard of the teachings of Isaiah in chapter 5 that refer to the nation of Israel as the vine. Uh, it was planted on a fertile hillside. It says the gardener, which is God, he did everything to cultivate the land for the vine to produce an abundant harvest. Yet when the time came, the vine yielded only bad fruit. So the gardener left the land to itself. In Jesus' parable in John chapter 15, he replaces Israel with himself as the true vine. Unlike Israel, Jesus will not fail to produce fruit in all of the branches that are connected to him. The point of Jesus' metaphor is that he will succeed where Israel failed. I find it interesting that in order for a grapevine to fulfill its purpose, the vine must be lifted up in order to send out its branches and eventually those branches will bear fruit. But first the vine has to be lifted up like Jesus was lifted up. The vine's main function is to draw water. It draws the nutrients from the soil, draws water to provide for the branches, and ultimately it sends it to bear the fruit. Under the care of the gardener, the vine is prepared for the best opportunity to yield quality fruit. This is done through pruning. Now, talking about pruning, I think we're going to have to go back into the Word and look at the first part of this parable. So turn to uh, uh, 15 chapter 1. It says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every bran branch that does bear fruit, He prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. Now, the pruning process is vital. It's, the, it's probably the most important process for growth. And God Himself, as the gardener, has the responsibility to, to prune away. And the Bible makes it clear here, there's a distinction in the pruning process. First is the cutting back or the, or the pruning to allow growth for the new branches that are coming up. The second is going to be the cutting off or the separating completely of the branch. Now, this separ when this separation happens, it's a deep separation all the way down at the trunk, at the base of this branch. Now, this branch is no good. The reason that it was separated is because it was not bearing fruit. They're cut off completely. See, friends, Jesus, He's the true vine. Through Him, we, we receive everything that we need. Separated from the vine, we wither and we fade away. God the Father lifted up Jesus so that in Him we may live and bear fruit. He prunes away the selfishness, the self-centeredness. He prunes away all of that stuff that does not produce fruit in our lives if we let it. So how can we remain connected? to the vine? Well, spend time with Jesus. When we spend time with Him, we're committing a portion of our day to Him. 
and we're there talking with Him, we're conversating with Him, we're praying before Him, we're interceding for others, this is how we remain connected. Number two, we rest in His presence. When we rest in His presence, we listen to Him. We seek to understand His wisdom and His knowledge and uh, the multifacets of his, of his glory and His goodness. And we just rest in His presence. The third way we can remain connected is to share love, to share His love with others around us. Now, God said that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart. But the second greatest is this, to love others as you love yourself. So, I challenge you today and I encourage you today Jesus is your lifeline. Allow Him to prune those areas that don't produce fruit. Give Him access to every area of your life and just wait and see what happens. Thanks.